Let me ask you this. Uh, let me let me read something, and I'll just do this in the form of a question, okay? Since we we're talking about spells, if somebody says words cast a spell on people much more than we spell them, is that somebody that is out there casting a spell with their words? Is that something that that we can look at and say, you know, if that person is that's how they feel, that's their goal? I say it is. Well, and absolutely. Oh, I absolutely. L listen, you have prophetic people. You have pastors, you have evangelists that are out there using word magic. They're actually using scripture to, to literally brainwash people. Now, what do I mean by that? That's going to be controversial. Oh, my God, Mark, what do you mean by that? In other words, like the prosperity movement, like I'm, I'm, I'm using right now, they, uh, the scripture, we're given us to be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together. See, they've, they've, they've brainwashed the people into thinking, into giving. So now they're using the, the scripture as a weapon against the people for their own personal gain. And that's not what the scripture was meant for. That's not what it was meant for, for your own personal gain like that. So these guys are, are, are getting fat. They're getting happy. They've built a pyramid scheme. That's word magic when, when you start doing these things. These guys that are releasing prophetic word after prophetic word, God's not saying a whole lot right now corporately, period. It's, this is a time to stand. This is a time to war right now. So you've got this word magic going on. But would I say that that's coming from a, a, a source? Melissa knows about the uh, the word magic and the spelling. Uh, what was it you were talking about uh, a while back? We were talking about this the other day, Melissa. Well, there's a, a documentary I watched about a year and a half ago that talked about spelling words. And in the video, it was talking about how they did not really want, they didn't really care about teaching us how to learn how to spell. It was all about broadcasting the spell and learning how to spell cast. Wow. Okay? And when you dig into um, language and you understand how language really works, that's pretty much what they're doing. And so there's also the other side of this that words, um, what I want to say is that the Illuminati has been taught to deny everything. So right away, if you guys are going to say, well, we should just go to these people and ask them if they're Illuminati, they've been taught to lie, guys. Yes. It's not hard. It's not hard because you're of your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning is a verse in the Bible. So when we have that going on, they're also taught, I believe they're taught to have a two-faced thing happening. Okay. If you look at the Mason uh, foundation in the Masonic temples, it's black and white checkerboard. It's black and white checkerboard because there's a mixture of occult and goodness. Okay. That's basically what they're doing, guys. They come in and shake hands with us in the name of Christianity, in the name of godliness, but they've got their other hand behind their back thinking, oh, what can I do to deceive you? What can I do to betray you? A lot of people come in and befriend in order to betray. And that is like one of the first things that is um, discernible if you ask the Holy Spirit to train you up in that, to know when a spirit is coming. Discerning the spirit is is partly for discerning the spirit that a person is coming to you in okay their motivation may not be right they may be completely uh, in upper level evil maybe they're in a more you know a more subtle evil but the whole thing is the bible warned us about the power of life and death being in our tongue so if we're going to speak certain words and the enemy has a different meaning for each word the Christians are out here not paying attention to these words. Amen. Like we're just taking it for face value. We take it, oh, I'm I'm really glad to see you. You know, I just want to be your friend. And all the while, all really they want to do is get to know you and get your business so they can betray you. Guys, words have different meanings to different people. There's different people that have come in a spirit that is not of God. And the Bible warns us that there are many, many that will come in my name saying that i am the christ or here's the christ and it will deceive many so if we don't start asking these questions if we don't really start understanding that certain people are sent by the enemy to gain information and you know the discernment will help you with that and one more thing i'll say about this is that the bible says through constant practice you train your senses to know good from evil yes don't yes. automatically think that you already know the difference between good and evil. Come it's on. in the Bible that you have to train yourself to know the difference. Well said, and listen. I'd like, to, I'd like to for no reason. I'd like to say this: it's subconsciously, and this is what signs are about. The things that we don't pay attention to, they enter our subconscious mind, and in in the subconscious mind is where we begin to get deceived. It's just like the word television. 
<laughs> tell a vision. This is media telling you their vision and what they want you to believe. It's very important that we understand that. It's so important. And I'm so glad you brought this up, Melissa. It's sub, when, when it begins to, when we don't pay attention to it, look, there's, there's the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious is what we're hearing you with right now and what you're watching us with and what you're seeing us with. And that conscious has the ability to close or open. If you believe us, your, your conscious is going to open up and it's going to move into your subconscious mind. If you don't believe us, you're going to close that gate and it's not going to walk into your subconscious mind. Signs, physical signs that we don't pay attention to with our eyes, open that gate automatically and move into our subconscious mind. And this is where deception begins. Very strongly and very important that we discipline our, ourselves and what to watch for and what to recognize and what to pay attention to. These little signs will tell all. If you can't discern read the signs if you don't do anything else read the signs doc you want to add anything to that well that's what the um, freemasons practice even manny p hall and alistair crowley in their writings to look at the allegories look at the symbols those cast see i i look at it a little differently i know what it said about words cast spell on people much more than people spell them but what i got from it was we cast a spell on people much more than words we don't need words. We can use these symbols. Yes, these symbols that's right. Will cast words on you. All we got to do is put it up somewhere and you fixate on it. And next thing you know, you're under this cramps and this spell. So that's what I got from that whole word. Well, see, whole word. All right. Got a question for y'all then. Since we're talking about symbols, I'll just ask you like this. What is it about these Illuminati types that love triangles? And Paul, you already alluded to the triangle when you said what the Lord told you about your emblem. Okay. What is it about this bunch that they love these triangles? And that is the, seems to be the symbol of symbols. And is it fair? And I'll, let me ask this question first, and then we'll, I'm going to address something directly. I, and Paul, I think you said it right. Not everybody that simply because there's a triangle does not necessarily mean it's Illuminati. But if you put this together, and that is what, and the way they do that, and there's an all C and I, because we know that that's on our dollar bill, the currency of the all C and I, that is an Illuminati symbol. The whole the way that that dollar bill is put, pointed out, it's a drawing of Washington, D.C. with the, with the uh, what do you call it, the Washington Monument, which, you know, uh, that is an Illuminati. We forget that Illuminati, uh, Masons built Washington, D.C., and, and, you know, I've heard this argument that, well, the Masons back then are not the, like the Masons they are now. That's, that's, that's baloney. Yes, they are. They're the same bunch. They're not changed. Uh, you know, and, and, but they, what they're doing in this infiltration, and I'll just, let me just say it like this. Um, the triangle has become a part, sadly, of this revival movement. And it's not just that but you put that with everything else and it does bring you back to the conclusion that you've got an illuminati spirit and I, you know again we're not judging motive here but if that's what your symbol is that you're promoting your books with and you're promoting your conferences with if it's a duck if it quacks like a duck if it walks like a duck if it talks like a duck and walks like a duck i'm just an old south georgia humble boy here today i think it's a duck okay Am I right? Let me say, let me say this. Uh, Satan never, he's not an originator. He's a duplicator. Yes. A triangle is the most powerful symbol that represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Come and on. if I can duplicate that and put a slightly different twist to it, this is why the Illuminati loves that triangle. It is the most powerful symbol that represents the father the son and the holy ghost and as on a duplicator satan will come in there and duplicate it and twist the meaning instead of representing the truth agreed. anybody else want to chime in on that melissa agreed one thing i think of too is the three strand cord is not easily broken so you've got the triangular system but you've also ironically got to have three board members at least i guess to have a 501c3 to incorporate, you need at least a base of three. Okay, so we've got a bunch of people here that are like not understanding that the symbols, they haven't been trained, first of all, to know that this is a cultic. 
And that's a big issue because you need to be able to at least know your enemy well enough to cast him out or stay away from him, in my opinion. And so because we haven't been trained to look at that stuff or we're too fearful to go look at it and dig, I hear that a lot with Christians. They're too afraid to know what's going on. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a problem, guys. If it's you amazing how many God, pastors tell me that. And yeah. if you trust God enough and you know his voice, he's, it's not fearful to dig in. It's really not that fearful when you know God and you know his voice and he tells you you're going in too deep, get back here, you're off track. And so, you know, we have to do our, our investigating, but they've specifically done this. And I believe it also is representation of the Tower of Babel. I honestly believe there's a little bit of that in there too. That is whoever gets to the top first, right? Building a gateway to God without Jesus, people. Okay, Jesus is the remnant. All of you guys carry Jesus in your heart. When you look at Masons, they do a lot of stuff with the noose around the neck. They do a lot of stuff with the hoodwink, the blindfold across the eyes, okay? Wow. Exactly. All, all of that is, is symbolic. They walk through rituals that are symbolic of basically mocking everything that Jesus did, okay? They go mock baptisms, mock funerals. If they want to curse people, they'll conduct a mock funeral, all right? They are literally doing things that are supposed to carry weight. And it does carry weight. If you've got an oath in that system, they've got a legal right to you. And those oaths, have you have to come out of those oaths. You can't just believe, okay, I'm done with that. It's not there anymore. You have to renounce those things because you've actually, your family has come into agreement with what they're doing at the top, whether you want to know what they're doing at the top or not. And the problem is the upper, the upper levels are the ones that have soared to the top of the pyramid. And they're in a place of ruling. And guys, I got news for you. The body of Christ is supposed to rule and reign with Christ. We are the ones that are supposed to be seated up there, right? But there is a way to get to the top that doesn't include a brotherhood. It doesn't include secret societies. And it doesn't include this whole little ritualistic thing. If you delight yourself in the ways of the Lord, he will bring the rest of it to you. If you think about the things that he wants you to do and you're walking in righteousness, he will open doors for you that no man can shut. Unfortunately, the Illuminati people, their character is that they can come against us and shut the door when they believe that they need to shut the door. They can make one phone call to their brotherhood and knock people off the internet. Okay? So don't think for a second this stuff isn't happening in the church. It is. The church right now, the 501c3 churches are businesses. That's where it's Here. happening the most. Yep. <laughs> it's in the church. It's amazing how many pastors have told me, no, 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 no. Don't say that. I don't want to know it. I don't want to know it. I'm comfortable with where I'm at right now. Yeah. And the more I know, the more I'm required. So don't even, no, no. I'm going to walk away from you. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and look, the other thing with the 501c3, people say, well, well, you're trying to divide the brethren. They're not my brethren. If you're in a 501c3, you are not my brethren. I'm trying to get you to become uh, the brethren. I'm trying to educate you as a rescue mission to bring you into the body of Christ. You are a Nicolaitan. You're under a curse. What part about this do people not understand? We're trying to save people. We're not attacking the people. We're attacking the spirits that they're under, the control, the headship that they're under, period. So, I mean, and, I, but, and, and the problem is people are, are drawn to talent. <laughs> right now they're drawn to talent versus anointing. There's that a huge awesome. difference. The church, the church and these prophetic movements, these prophetic people have talent. They don't have anointing. This is why they got this. Ask yourself, why is America in the world burning? Because the church hasn't done its job because they've gone after talent. They are not anointed to do the job. That leaves us with 4% of us that are anointing in order to take on all of this mess. Mark, I want to, I just want to say something that you said something about the brethren and that's the difference guys. There's a difference between the brotherhood and the brethren. Oh, come on. When you, when you greet each other with brotherly love, you want the best for each other. You want to speak success for them. You want to see them succeed and go to the top. When it's the brotherhood, they're all about their own little judges, Masonic police. They've got their own, uh, the Eastern star ladies, um, some of these church denominations have even been founded by this stuff. If you look in, I, I encourage all of you guys to do a little dig. And I might be overstepping here, but you need to take a look at the Assemblies of God. 
Yes. So if you look at Charles Fox Parham, he was a 33rd degree Mason, guys. He founded the church. He set it up. It's a little weird to me that there is like um, Royal Rangers missionettes. And then you've got, if you look at the Masonic side of it, you've got um, the uh, Rainbow Girls and you've got the Demole for the boys. They're all about doing the good thing, earning a badge, right? Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all of this stuff has been set up in a way that makes goodness something that is very um, valued in humanity. The more goodness you do, if you, if you give to charity. And something else I want to bring up, there's a big difference between philanthropy and paying your tithes, okay? And I just heard a prophet speaking about Rockefeller, okay? And how wonderful he was because he paid his tithe. All right, the man had some really shady business dealings. Absolutely. Really, really shady. And just because someone comes and gives their money away and acts you know, full of philanthropy, I can't even say that word, doesn't mean that you're paying your tithes in a way that God's going to honor it. Okay? God is, he loves a cheerful giver. He does. And he says that's the only area that you can test him in. And the Masons know that, guys. They have their own Bible. They swear on the Bible. They open up the Bible. They have the Bible at the event. They're using the Bible to get the good things out of it that God has promised people. But it's all about building a gateway to God and shutting out God's son. That's not, that's not the same thing. Philanthropy and ties are not the same thing. Beautifully well, said. Read, read the signs. Read the signs. You know, the, the Assemblies of God uh, logo. Read the signs. Close the Bible a little bit. Move it over to the left. It becomes a square and compass. Read the signs. Documents. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, let me let me say this real quick. Uh, when Jesus walked the face of the earth, he he came against the church. Then, let me say that again. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, he came against the church. When uh, so the church back then were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and I guarantee you, Jesus did not say. Uh, call the Pharisees aside and say, uh, let me ask you something. I don't want to offend you, so let me ask you something. He publicly said, you're nothing but a viper. You're a snake. You're a viper. Yep. So when we say go to our brethren, it's so true. Who's our brethren? We need to realize who our brethren is. It's not the Pharisees. Right. All right. Doc, let me, uh, I want to say something. Uh, Dr. Graves, you pointed this out Monday night, right? I think you pointed that out on the on the SmackDown show that the Assembly is a God, and it's ironic Melissa brought it up because you already were ahead of it. I mean, people, we've been noticing this. I noticed it, and when you, when you said it, I pulled it up and said, "Well, he's right." But it is a Masonic symbol when you start looking at it, right, buddy? No question. And the symbols that we see, they're they're in here. The Bible talks about these symbols. First of all, this is about two trees. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Come on, yes. brother. Of life. One tree represents the dollar sign. Another tree represents the cross. That's Come what on. it's all about. The love of money is the root of all evil. So whatever knowledge you're getting, and Melissa, you talked about the good and evil, the black and white, they mix it together. And That's if you go Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, it very clearly it talks about this. When the devil spoke to Eve, he spoke 46 words to her. 46 represents the chromosomes. But here's what's amazing. In Genesis 3, 5, it says, for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The interesting thing is the 33rd word he spoke to her was eyes. Now, how could that be a coincidence, that number 33 in Freemasonry and eyes? But that word eye is singular. He's saying your eye shall be opened. This connects to the witch of Endor. Endor means eye. You see how this all is connected? That dollar bill, the symbols they put on books, the symbols they put on things, because that eye, the all-seeing eye, the eye of Horus, the third eye, whatever eye you want to call it, is like sending a magical spell out that connects with this tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's in the Bible, very simply. So any triangle with an eye in it, you should completely know that it's not done by accident. It can't. And who covers one eye? Who covers one eye? Who exactly. covers one eye so they can have a single eye? It's, it's Illuminati. Got another question on this, and we're going to show a symbol because I want to deal with something that's out in the public. And it's not us just, I mean, I'll say it again. We're not here trying to throw this out, uh, just throw something against the wall. This is public domain knowledge, and we're going to address it here in a minute. But I'm going to ask you all as a panel, if somebody goes on a show, okay, their own show, and the first question, the first statement out of their mouth is, 
I've got 33 questions for you in 33 minutes. Is that a mistake? Do you think that just popped into his mind to say that crap? Or do you think that's Illuminati? Let me tell you something. Again, I'm just take, looking at this from a spiritual sense and a common sense perspective. Common sense tells me that why 33? Why does that number pop into your mind if you're not based upon and operating in a spirit of Illuminati and masonry? Am I, am I overreaching there? If it just popped up, there's some deep deception going on. Yeah, yeah it, look, it. this is the, this is the yeah, part where people have to open their eyes and question everything they're seeing and hearing right now. Because the deception that's on this planet is the greatest deception in the history of mankind right now. We have so much information and disinformation. It's throwing chaos into everything. You have to question everything you hear, everything you see. You need to take it before the Lord God himself, period. Go ahead, Melissa. Well, what I was going to say is the Masonic thing with the 33, the deception is kind of subconscious. There's, there's people that have gone into Masonry and maybe immediately decided that it's not for me. Okay. But depending on how far they went up, there is an agreement that has happened in the spirit realm. Right point. So there is a subconscious agreement with the occult whether they're doing it on purpose or not, okay? And I know this because I've been in deliverance for quite a while, you guys, and people don't realize how important it is that those oaths get renounced, okay? You are literally, Jesus did everything on the cross. There's no doubt about that. But then what happens when Jesus paid the price? Ultimately, it was supposed to be the only sacrifice, the last sacrifice. There's no more need to sacrifice humanity. Okay, how many businesses do you know that have sacrificed humanity to get to the top? A bunch. How? Uh, yeah, and how many people have actually had to pay a price for their life because there's been whistleblowing going on and no one wanted them to get that stuff out, so they release a murderous accusation, send out someone to kill them, or go after them themselves. There's a lot of this happening in the government. It's not so hard to recognize it in the government. But do we realize that there are some people so ruthless that are in the Christian realms that have made a lot of money that will do that kind of thing? Those oh. things have to be renounced, you guys. You can't, you have to come out of subconscious agreement with the bloodshed. The life is in the blood. Blood carries weight. Yes, it does. And there's a blood sacrifice, it carries weight. And so if Jesus paid the ultimate price, and our families willingly chose to go back in and sign our name on the dotted line. Do you really think that Jesus, I mean, I'm just saying here, but it doesn't seem to me like Jesus is going to be involved in everything you're doing when you willingly chose to put your whole family back in the enemy's camp. That's right. It's a subconscious black cloud of agreement. Yes. So when you're being tempted to say 33 questions for you in 33 minutes, even if you're not evil to the core, I would be asking the Holy Spirit, why did that just come out of my mouth? What am I in agreement right. with that needs to be taken care of? Right. I got to laugh because I don't want to be accused of being an angry old white man like I'm accused of being all the time. So I have to laugh a little bit. Every time I get fired up, people think I'm an angry old white man. And I promise I'm not. Um, I just, I find it hilarious though. And, and just... Oh, I better, I'll, I'll leave this for the, the second panel discussion. But I, but I found that hilariously funny. The same individual had went on a show just, they always love to do videos. When this stuff's called out, I'm sure there's going to be a video out here soon about the defense that I'm not Illuminati. I am not an Illuminati. I am not Illuminati. Well, okay. Uh, you just said 33 questions in 33 minutes, man. I mean, 33 is a Mason number, okay? Now, another serious issue. Um, Lynn Wood. And look, I, I want to just go on record. The There is a serious um, war going on right now in the patriotic movement. But as a byproduct of what's going on with the patriotic movement and the skirmishes or whatever you want to call them, a lot of spiritual figures are being drawn into this. And a lot of spiritual figures are being called out as well as political people. And there was an event, Mark alluded to it in Tulsa here back in the spring. And at that event, um, there were several shots that were taken, pictures, I mean, not, not gunshots, but pictures of the event. And at the event, there was 
this triangle. Uh, if you'd show that on the screen, um, and we can look at that right now and then show people, and I want to make it clear, this is not a personal dig at anybody, but this is something we want to show you to let you make the call. Now, you can see the, the uh, emblem right there, this General Flynn, and I, uh, who's the gentleman there, uh, Mark, who's that guy? I, I think that's Doug Billings. I'm not 100%. That's, Billings. Not, that's not important who they are, but what is important is what's behind them there. And you can see the all C and I at the top, Z in the middle. I can't see exactly what the middle one is. Can we go, go to the go to close go. up? There we go. And you can see Jonathan and then the show that this individual, because this was at their ministry, I guess, and their ministry was putting this on. But I'm going to ask uh, Paul, I'm going to ask you first. I'm going to ask Dr. Then I'm going to ask Melissa and Mark. Y'all each chime in on this. You look at that. Is that an innocent triangle with the all C and I at the top? Or is that uh, Illuminati? You, you, you know, uh, the question needs to be asked, why is it even there? Yes, exactly. That's, what, that, that's the answer that needs to pop up. Why is it even there? If, there, if somebody's claiming not to be Illuminati, why are there Illuminati signs? All over why the are there symbols? Uh, so that needs to be asked. Why is it even there? Why, why uh, put that back up on the screen on the close up, if you don't mind, please. My question is this Linwood called out. Uh, one of the gentlemen, and he called out the pyramid. It, it's, it's a pyramid yes. with an all-seeing eye, okay? Yes. Now, my question is this. Do we not question the people whose name is inside the pyramid? That's my question. So you, you see the names inside the pyramid. So do we not question that? It's not so much the guys in the photo that I'm worried about. Right, it's exactly. Who's in the pyramid? That's, right. that's what's bothersome to me. All right. Now, uh, Doctor, go ahead and chime in on John, Melissa. You and Doctor Grace chime in too, real quick. What's y'all's thoughts on that? When you see that, what 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 do you think when you see something like that? Go ahead, Melissa. Uh, I'll say, as a Christian and knowing my word, and it says that you take heed lest no man deceive you. I would like to know why anyone would have a problem with us questioning this. That's a great point. It's a great question. It's a great That's question. I'm serious because yeah. you know what? There's a lot of people that would be just so angry that we're even questioning this. How right. dare you? We're not worthy, right? Uh huh. I, I'm sorry, but for my salvation, working it out with fear and trembling, Come on, Come on, ain't nobody's going to convince me not to question it. Right. Exactly. Why is it even there? Why is it even? Doc, what you say, you buddy? First of all, we already talked about the pyramid in the eye biblically already, but. Me personally, which I didn't know I was it was going to come to this, but I, I know who Z is. Z is <laughs> Zizana Budapest. That's a major, major witch who has her hands <laughs> all over this country, all over the world. And even um, as I'm learning, she's trained some ministers too. So there's no accident that, that that's there. Another thing is, in another picture I saw, they had this honey bottle turned upside down. And I saw Jonathan right there in the middle. What well, is interesting in the Bible that Jonathan tasted the honey, and his eyes were yes. enlightened. That word enlightened means illuminated. It wasn't a good illumination. It was a bad illumination. So I, I'm finding that kind of coincidental that you got Z in there and Jonathan in that eye. Are they saying something with this illumination, with this Z, with this Budapest? I think so, but that's because I know about Z. Wow, that's powerful, Doc. I, and I didn't ever put that together. I wouldn't have put that together in a million years. That's great. Uh, but let me... Let me piggyback on something that Melissa said because and then we're going to go to another figure I'm going to go to I want to show another shot of something else it is interesting to me and y'all can chime in on this how that these people are get they get really defensive and they get defensive quick and they start shooting their videos out if we if not so much because I'm going to tell you something there has been nothing on this show none of any of you have went after any of these people on a personal level we've not questioned their personal stuff but we have dealt with stuff like this because this affects people out there. What people do behind the closed door, that's their business. That's the way I look at it. But this is, this is open game. This is open discussion right here. But when you do this and you test the spirits and you test their doctrine and you test what they're saying, then they go out and when they come at people like us, they don't make it about testing the spirits, testing the doctrine, testing what we're saying. They go after us. They make it personal. They made it personal with my, my buddy, Mark Taylor, the other night. And, you know, Doc, you mentioned Jezebel. I thought about something when you said it. 
Jezebel never confronted Elijah herself. She What did she do? She sent her messenger, didn't she? She sent her messenger. And see, that's why I, I just find it hilariously funny when this bunch says, we all need to get together and have a meeting and discuss this. They no more want to have a meeting with the true prophetic than no more than Jezebel would have ever wanted to see Elijah face to face. She was scared to death of him because you know why? She knew Elijah knew the truth. She, he knew the true God of heaven and he had the true power in him. And she knew she didn't. So what did she do? She didn't do it herself. She said, her messenger boy, as Paul, you said a while ago, I'm going to, you got 24 hours and you're going to be a dead man. She didn't have the courage to do it herself. So they get behind their videos and then they go after people that, as uh, Melissa, you said it beautifully. If you test what they're saying, then it becomes personal on that end, not on this end, because we're not dealing with personalities here. Stop this. I ain't uh, worshiping a bunch of personalities here on this show tonight. I am dealing with what's being said and what's being presented out there. Any any thoughts on that before we go to the next symbol? Everybody is that is associated with this needs to ask themselves the question, why am I associated with this? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is drawing me to that? And then the other thought is why, um, if we have this going on and the people are not guilty of anything, then why are you feeling drawn to put it in behind your screen? <laughs> why are you feeling, why? I want to know why as a Christian, it's one thing if you're, if you're in the patriotic stream and that's where you stay, but you go in and you start recruiting Christians and believers and evangelistic leaders, okay? And you're bringing them up on a platform that has Illuminati symbolism behind it. And I realize that maybe some of you don't have the heart to go after and hurt and harm people, but I still want to know why is it in the background? Yeah, it's, it's not about the yeah, exactly, Melissa, not personal. Doctor, anything, Paul, Mark, anything else on this? I'm going to show another emblem because I want to. Every viewer, every viewer needs to ask themselves that question. Every viewer that's watching this needs to ask Is this true? Is this right? Why is it there? Excellent question, Melissa. Excellent question. Mark, anything, bud? I would say that any man or woman of God that is in covenant with some of that stuff, you need to seriously question who and who, what their allegiance is to. Come on. Period. Period. Now, there's a whiteboard floating around out there, and I'm going to bring up the whiteboard. I don't care. No, let's go. Let's there's, go. There's a, there's a lot of religious people on that whiteboard. Go for it. And I'm going to tell you something. You need to question who these people are and who their allegiance is to. So... You go ahead with the next image here, brother. Go ahead. I want to show this next image because I want to show something interesting because let me let me put this in, in text. This individual, when because this took place in the spring and there was a big blowback of it. And if you look carefully, this is an interview that was being done with some mutual friends. And if you look in the background, that same image is behind that, this individual. If you'll zoom in there just a little bit on it and go to the right just a little bit and you can see... The same image that was in Tulsa is there behind him. Okay, and then you can see the all seeing eye. You can see the all seeing eye there at the very top. Same image, right? You and take his, and, his, and his name is there. His name is there. Same name. On another image, and um, let me see if and I can. Got, and you know what? Look at look at also. I'm noticing just above that. There's a book with one eye showing. Yeah. Why? <laughs> okay. Why? Now I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, Go ahead, and you can take that image down just for a second, and I'm going to come back to the screen. Now, when it's convenient, when it's convenient, Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus and the cross is replaced the all I. Melissa, you said something a while ago. What are they? They're two-faced. What, what do they do? They shift, right? They do what they want to do for convenience. When it's convenience, it's Jesus. When it's not convenient or when it's convenient to put the world on display, you have the all I. We're simply asking a question tonight. What does that say? What does that say? That ball, look, that should disturb anybody that sees that stuff, okay? Now, are we impugning that this person's character? That's between him and God. No, but we are questioning what they're putting out there and promoting as part of their ministry focus. And this is the main cause of this false revival that's going out across this country. Yeah, and also, what's the plan? And why do you why do you get this all set up 
bringing in Illuminati symbolism when we've just gone through the last, what, four or five years trying to deal with the deep state. So why is it there? I don't understand. I, I as a Christian, a person that has dug in and done my homework and read the Bible for years and years, I know what God is telling me. And, you know, you guys look suspicious. I'm sorry. You do. You look very suspicious. I want to know what your ultimate agenda really is. Good question. Anybody else? Doc, anything? Well, I, I just want to talk about that whiteboard, too. It's, um, to me, it's like a big white Ouija board is what it is. <laughs> It does look like one, don't it? <laughs> All these names on there. I mean, it's, it's necromancy. It's familiar spirits. They got dead prophets on there, dead words, old word, old mantles, dead mantles. Familiar spirits don't, don't just operate in dead things. They operate in other things on earth. They're familiar. So they got all this stuff on there and all these arrows pointing to President Trump like it's darts and arrows coming at him. But where's the arrow pointing to Jesus? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? So anybody on there who's a part of the fivefold should be have a problem because it should be pointing to Jesus, not to get to Trump to make a name for yourself, to have notoriety, to be renowned, to be famous, to get money. It should be pointing to Jesus. And that white Ouija board says all we need to know about their plans. And they're pointing at President Trump. That's right. That, that, that white board is designed to control who has the king's ear. Yes. That's what it's about. If you control who has the king's ear, you control the king. Mm. And that's what that whiteboard is about. That whiteboard didn't happen overnight. No, it did not. That took months to make. It took months to make. And there was an, there's an asterisk by some names. It's color-coded. The bigger names are in black. Some are in, in blue. Some are in green. Some have a red cross by their name. So it's color-coded. So that, to me, it was, the, was part of the fulfillment of that one prophecy that God gave me that it was about controlling the king's ear. It's about removing one set of witchcraft and, and replacing it with a higher level is what it is of deception to, to control the king's ear, to control those who control the king's ear. Where Seth, wait, go ahead. There it is. Thank you. There uh, it is right there. That is a, that is, you know, Dr. You're right. It looks, it, that, just, that is the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. And like you said, uh, Mark, that just didn't happen overnight. That's been no. put together over months. That's right. And that's well planned. And I remember you saw, talking about that when we first brought this up. And uh, I remember showing that one night, just a <laughs> casual, just holding it up, and all hell broke loose. And I was like, "What is it about a whiteboard? Everybody's getting upset about." And it just—it struck a nerve. It struck a nerve out there. And Melissa, that's another thing. When you strike a nerve, man, I tell you what, these demons. Woo! My goodness. Oh, yeah, over the target. You can tell the yeah. manifestation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I, I know we're probably running short on time here because I don't know how much more time we got here, Chris. Uh, you know, we're going to give you all a chance to wrap it up. That's what I was about to say, Mark. Go ahead. And I'll interrupt you. But nope. we're going to do this again. But I do want to just go around the table real quick. Y'all, y'all, final thoughts and anything else y'all want to add, go for it. All right. Fi final thoughts for me is this. If you can't discern, read the signs. Read the symbolism, guys. They're not hiding it anymore. I mean, just like that image we showed uh, that was behind uh, someone in their studios. Is he even hiding it? I mean, I'm just asking. Is he even hiding it? Because the fact of the matter is, if you're not hiding it, then you can't get mad at people for questioning it. So if you can't read, if you can't discern, read the signs. Stop being drawn to talent and get, you know, you know it, it's, it's not about the talent. People being drawn to the talent. It's about anointing who has got anointed and who he hasn't. The real revival. This is not a revival that's happening. It's under the Kundalini. Otherwise, you wouldn't be having these people getting sick the way they are. The real revival is going to come when this mass death event happens, that the, that the, not what Mark's saying, this is what the scientists and the doctors have been saying, when this death event begins, that's when the real revival is going to start because the spirit of the fear of the Lord is going to fall on this planet like it's never been seen before. That's where the real revival is going to be. So don't get drawn into this stuff, guys. Doc? Um, well, I just want to sum it up in just a story from the Bible. You know about the story of um, Herodias when she came and danced seductively before Herod. And what was the whole point to that? To get the head of the true prophet, John the Baptist. And that's what they're doing. They're these are seducing spirits to come and make sure that the head of the true prophet is cut off. And then they have that place in order to bring through enchantment and soothsaying and sorcery. That's what's been going on for a long time. That's why they infiltrated the prophetic, because that's what they're trying to do. Seduction. He gave her anything she wanted. Whatever you want, give it to me. Well, I want the head of John the Baptist, the, the true prophet, which Jesus called the greatest prophet that ever lived. So that's what's going on now. And I hope people can see that. 
Well said, buddy. Well said. Paul, my dear friend, final thoughts. We're a voice crying out in the wilderness. <laughs> I, want to, I want to say this. I know it's difficult for the viewers out there to distinguish what is and what's not. If Jesus said most people are going to be deceived, we have to assume that we're part of that most people. It is our responsibility to walk ourselves out of deception, prove to ourselves that we're not being deceived, and that's through the word of God. I know it's difficult. I know it is. I, I get questions on a daily basis. How do I know? How do I know? How do I know? It's going to come down to who do we trust? To the viewers, that's what it's going to come down to. Who do we trust? Who do we feel like that is part of God, and who do we feel is not part of God? We are bringing this information for education, educational purposes. We are not pushing against an individual. We are pushing against a spirit that has overtaken the church and infiltrated the church for centuries. We have to realize that we have been, we've all been deceived. Every one of us in this panel has been deceived at some point in our life. We had the responsibility of walking ourselves out. So that's what I want to encourage the viewers. Just assume that you're deceived, if I can say that, and then walk yourself out of it with proof. And that's what I'm, I want to say. So ask God. Don't ask me. Don't ask Mark. Don't ask Chris, Dr. Graves, and Melissa who I should trust. you got to ask God and let God lead you to that direction. God bless everyone that's watching. Melissa? I just want to say in the Bible, it says that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So if there's something in there that you're really struggling with um, about the deception, you need to go to the Lord and you need to spend some alone time with him. And you need to get a better understanding of what he's really saying to you. Because mm -hmm. at this point, guys, deception is a choice. Amen. Um, Mark, anything else? You was going to say something? Nope, I'm good, brother. I just want to say this as we close tonight. I'm going to uh, piggyback on all four of these individuals. And I want to just tell them publicly, I love you guys. Y'all have been such a blessing tonight. Um, <clears throat> I know this is difficult. Paul, she said it. This is not easy. Um, and I have to tell you, this was not something that was just thrown together. We have been agonizing over this. I know that many of on this panel, we've been agonizing over this for over a year. Um, I have talked to Mark privately. I've talked to Dr. Grace privately. I've talked to Paul privately. I've talked to Melissa privately. Um, and we have tried our best to pray and hopefully that maybe people would see the light and that they would, these, these um, ministries that are promoting the spirit would, would go away, but they've not. They're digging in. And it just seems like more and more people are getting more spellbound by them and snake bit. I call it snake bit. It's like somebody's snake bit. And this is not my nature to go on such an attack like this, but I have felt constrained in the spirit to do it, not in an attacking form of people, but as Paul beautifully said, the spirit that's behind this stuff. Because folks, listen to me. Um, we're in the last of the last days. And this that's going on tonight is not something that's just happenstance. It's the spirit of Antichrist that's preparing the earth for something very sinister that's ahead. And if you're not careful, we all are going to be caught up in it. And that's where you've got to know two things tonight. You need to know the Christ of the Bible intimately. You've got to know the true Christ. You're not going to discern the false from the true unless you know the true. And number two, you've got to get in that word and you've got to know the word of God. You've got to know the word of God. And Instead of wasting all this time on these videos and all this YouTube stuff, get in the Word this year. As you go into 2022, find the Word of God as your source and nothing else. And I guarantee you, you won't have to ask anybody on this panel who's fake and who's true. You won't have to ask them. Um, this was not any personal dig at anybody. This was not any animosity or a vengeful kind of discussion. I don't think anything that's been said here tonight has been anything but just a discussion about the spirits behind this movement that is sweeping America like wildfire. And I have to just interject this before we close. Some of the biggest named churches in America are hosting these events. And it makes you wonder about the discernment level of these pastors who are household names, many of them, and they embrace this stuff like they got no problem with it. I got, I got a problem with it. 
I got a serious problem with it. And I think we wouldn't be here tonight if we didn't have a problem with what they're doing. The next panel we'll have, we will, we will we'll have one soon. We'll do this again because we didn't really get to everything I wanted to get to tonight. And I know these guys didn't either. But I want to thank you for being with us on the special Mac Files broadcast. This will be airing on this network. Paul, I believe you're going to be airing on yours. And uh, the uh, Rockin' the West Coast Prayer Group, I think Melissa will find a way to air it on hers. But you're welcome to take what we said tonight. Now, you can get mad at us if you like. We love you the same. I'm not going to get mad with you if you get mad with us. You can believe what you want to believe. If you what we said tonight, uh, you say, well, I'm just going to turn you guys off. I'm going to go listen to who I want to. Well, guess what? We're not your babysitters. You can go listen to exactly who you want to listen to. But we've delivered our souls to you tonight. And you know now what the truth is. And it's up to you. It's up to you. And again, I, I know in my heart of hearts, this has not been personal, but it's been about the fruit and the doctrine. And I will rest my case on that tonight. God bless you out there. God bless your families. Let me say a word of prayer over our panel before we go. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name tonight, we thank you for this discussion. Father, we have delivered our soul to the people, and we ask you to, to touch everything that's been said. Let the people now, Lord, take it, and let the Holy Spirit speak to each individual heart tonight on their own level. And Father, we just thank you right now that um, you, we, you know our hearts on this panel tonight, Lord. We're not here to divide. We're here to unite around the truth and to bring people into a relationship with Christ, not anybody else, but a relationship with Jesus. And we thank you for that tonight. We give you praise and glory and honor for Mark, for Dr. Graves, for Paul Obel and Melissa Leggett. Lord, we thank you for these fine warriors of the cross, and we ask you to bless them and touch them and protect them tonight by your blood and by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. I'll be back in a minute with a final thought tonight. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Paul Obel. Thank you, Melissa Leggett. We'll do this again very soon, folks. Have a good night, everybody.